New York last night was like every other city in the nation, only bigger. Today, reporter Barbara Walters toured Manhattan last night. Here is her report. It's never easy to get a taxi at rush hour in New York City, but last night it was almost impossible. The taxi drivers put their off-duty signs in their cabs and went home to listen to the news broadcasts. We made our way at 5 p.m. to the new Russian embassy, which is on East 67th Street. When we arrived, they were just taking the flag down, which had been flying at half-mast. In the afternoon, the mission had been holding a, a get-acquainted luncheon with editors of Time and Life magazine when the news of the president's death was announced. The luncheon ended immediately. Although no official statement was given to us, the man who opened the door at the embassy said in a heavy Russian accent, I cannot speak for anyone but myself, but I personally am shocked. We then walked up Fifth Avenue to 810 Fifth Avenue, now quite a famous apartment building. There we spoke with Richard Nixon's butler. He had no idea when Mr. or Mrs. Nixon were coming home, and he was concerned about whether they would want dinner or not. Directly next door at 812 Fifth Avenue, the apartment building where Governor and Mrs. Rockefeller reside. There, the superintendent was busily trying to finish the new lobby because he had promised that it would be done on Tuesday. He also had no word from the governor or Mrs. Rockefeller. Up the block at another Fifth Avenue apartment building, a, a rare occurrence last night, a private cocktail party planned for the evening was going on as scheduled. We saw the people arriving in their black tie. But on 14th Street at Luchau's, a very large and what would have been a gala cocktail party had suddenly been canceled. This was for 200 people and was in honor of Cleveland Amory's new book, Celebrity Registrar. On this, one of the best business nights of the week, Broadway theaters were dark. Earlier in the day, the producers had gotten together and decided to cancel all performances. Broadway movie theaters were also all blacked out and no performances running. Radio City Music Hall closed down and refunded the money for reserved seats. 42nd Street, however, had business as usual, but to quote the owner of a gaudy arcade, business was terrible. At Saudi's restaurant in the theater district, most of the regular reservations had been canceled. The sparse clientele, said the maitre d', were people who usually wouldn't be able to get tables on a Friday night. The only familiar face that I recognized was that of Clifton Daniel, a New York Times editor and son-in-law of President Truman. Mr. Daniels evidently was getting a quick bite before going back to his paper because we could see all of the New York Times trucks ready to go out for the evening edition. In general, the glittering nightclubs remained dark. The Latin Quarter was closed, El Morocco, Copacabana. The Stark Club was the only nightclub that I found open. We went inside and spoke to the head waiter, and he said, the people here tonight are like the people who are out Christmas Eve. They have no home. Fifth Avenue, in the midst of decorating its store windows, stopped. All this week, the stores had their very lavish and colorful decorations out. Now they were blacked out. Saks Fifth Avenue had a display of cruise clothes. But immediately, the curtains were drawn over all of the windows, except one, and in that window, a formal portrait of the late president, surrounded by vases of crimson roses. St. Patrick's Cathedral, the largest in the United States, closed its doors to the public at 9.45 p.m., their regular closing time. There were still people kneeling on the street. Inside, the votive candles were lit. Ordinarily, I understand about one-third of them were lit, but last night, all were burning. Downtown in Greenwich Village was the only place where things looked almost normal. McDougal Street was jammed as usual, but perhaps not quite as boisterous. In the Yorkville section of Manhattan, a TV set had been pulled out of a record store and was on the sidewalk, and a small crowd of people stood silently around watching and listening to the news broadcasts. Uptown in Harlem, we found the strongest reaction in the city. Friday night is usually the big night in Harlem, and the streets are very crowded, but last night they were almost empty. The famed Apollo Theater with one of its top headliners of the year, Sam Cooke, had closed its door. At Small's Paradise, Harlem's chief night spot, a jazz group was playing. In the main dining room, there's a sign that says, Occupancy Limited to 600. There were eight people in the room.
You know, when you get hurt, shocked, or, or wounded, you want to be not alone, but you want to be away from crowds of people. And uh, this nation is wounded. It will have a century, I think, to absorb the historic impact of this terrible event. But right now, the people I think of are those that are left in the family. You know, the fact that uh, Jacqueline Kennedy and these two children. You were on a, on a trip with Mrs. Kennedy. Was it the one to India? Yes, it was. Well, it was a semi-official trip, but it was perhaps the most official trip that she had taken during the her years as the president's wife. You got to know her character fairly well and may have an idea of how, how she is reacting to this now. Well, this was a very happy trip, and I, I was thinking about it this morning. We remember Mrs. Kennedy's very gay and colorful clothes and her riding on, on the camel with her sister and her wanting to have her picture taken on the elephant for Caroline. But what I remember most is coming home on the plane when the trip was over and there were just a few reporters who were left. And we had asked Mrs. Kennedy if she wanted to make this kind of trip again. And she thought about it and said really she, she wanted to thank her husband the most and Princess Radzivill's husband for the chance to take this trip. But as wonderful as it was, it would have been so much more rewarding if he'd been along. This was a, a statement that was then printed in all the papers.